Song Talk Radio. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become better at writing songs. I'm your host, Neil Modi, and uh, in place of my uh, usual co-host, Phil Emery, is nobody. We're going to be running solo tonight with our with our guest. Um, so for our listeners, please send in your comments and questions to at Song Talk Radio on Facebook or Instagram, or feedback at songtalk.ca for the email, and we'll share your thoughts on the show. And please visit songtalk.ca to see the show post for this episode, to find links to resources we mentioned, and to download link uh, lyric and chord sheets to follow along with the songs uh, that we feature. And just another heads up, uh, we are welcoming our audience and our, our listeners to submit your answers to our songwriting challenge for 2023, of course, which is to write a song in a mode, uh, and uh, an unusual mode or a mode you're not familiar with. And of course, on the website, songtalk.ca, we do have uh, in the sidebar uh, a dedicated web page to uh, our songwriting challenge 2023 where you can dive deep on uh, on learning a little bit more about modes if you're not familiar with them and um, and we look forward to hearing your answers to the challenge so just email over um, your mp3 and the lyric sheet and the chords um, and a little paragraph about your songwriting process to feedback at songtalk.ca and uh, just like we've done the last couple of years um, we'll be featuring all our listener songs uh, on episodes of the podcast of course after phil and i share our answers <laughs> to the challenge um uh later on this summer so um tonight uh we are glad to have the songwriter and uh and lead vocalist of canadian rock band econo line crush trevor hurst um and here's a little taste of their new song no quitter album from Canadian rock veterans Econoline Crush, formed some 30 years ago by frontman Trevor Hurst, now the sole original member. The band's first full-length album in over a decade and documentary film Flatlander, about a rocker from Brandon Manitoba's second career as a psychiatric nurse, will be out later this year. The new single, No Quitter, is out now. Welcome to Song Talk Radio, Trevor Hurst. Thank you, Neil. It's good to be here. Great to meet you too, Trevor. Um, and great to have you on the show. Thanks for joining us. Um, I just want to start with, um, you know, your, 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 your bio even says veteran rockers. And I want to, I want to get a sense from you. Where, where do you feel like rock music is, you know, in 2023 or in, even in Canada in 2023? I, you know, it's interesting. I think that there was some bright, um, there was some good outcomes from, from COVID in a way, because a lot of people revisited it their collections of music, I think. I believe that they enjoyed uh, reading and movies and all kinds of stuff, you know, because we had to, we were kind of isolated. Mm -hmm. So I think that that might, in a, in a weird way, have saved rock music because it felt like for a while it was becoming a lost uh, style of music in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you look at the pop charts, obviously, you know, the, it's, it's, you know, mostly pop and, and hip hop and, and that and that line of stuff and then the rock charts are, are, are sort of separated. I mean, I've always felt this like for the last, you know, 20 plus years, especially like after the 90s, really, that there was such a splintering yeah. and, and everyone has their own kind of niche. And, and I don't know, I feel like I feel like there is there is still rock music out there, but you got to go digging <laughs> a little bit. You got to get past the top 40 and, and really find 
find, you know, and, and as an artist, we need to you need to find your fan base um, for that because they're, they're they're out there. Everyone wants everyone wants what they want, and um, it's always always a great thing. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about your uh, your songwriting uh, 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 process. Um, are you writing songs differently now than you were back then, a decade ago? Since, since you guys last released something. <laughs> Well, I think like there's obviously there's um, so many different ways. The way that I approach it, I, I'm usually working with a songwriter that that does the, a lot of the majority of the musical part uh, oh. in terms of putting the chord progressions together. Um, I was recently watching, uh, I think it was the 60 Minutes of Rick Rubin, and uh, Anderson Cooper was interviewing Rick Rubin, and, and he was asking Rick Rubin, sort of what what is it that you do, what do you bring to the table. And I was oddly comforted by his answers because, like, I've often felt sort of, um, I don't know what the word would be, but, you know, I, I, I really technically don't know a lot about chord progressions. I technically mm. don't spend a lot of time thinking about, well, why does this work and why does this chord work? I really, quite honestly, could give a damn. What I want to know is, does it emotionally connect with me? Do mm. I feel it? Is there something hidden within those chords that wants to get out? And that's the approach that I've taken my whole career. Hmm. It's, it's been like a, somebody coming up, go, well, what do you think of this? And then we start to work on it if it, if it feels right. Right. So, so when, when it comes to collaborating with someone, you're, you're, bringing, you're, you're using your voice as your primary um, instrument, per se, right? Yeah, my voice and my sort of, like, just my taste it's a weird thing because like for me i'm sure that for a lot of songwriters that are very technically inclined or you, you know that that look at you know what minor chords major chords how this all goes together you know it's kind of disturbing probably when people talk the way that i do but i really don't um i i feel like i am just making myself available for the song to come to me i am not that much of um person that would sit down and go okay today i'm gonna write a song about rivers and then just start doing it that just will never happen in my life ever 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 i don't do that i don't sit down and say okay i'm gonna write a country song never happened ever 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 it's about me the connection between the guy that or the girl or the individual whatever that i'm working with and how that song structure whatever they put together whatever sort of sort of thing that we start with and even myself, if I'm fooling around the piano and I put a couple chords together and I go, I really like the sound of this. And then somebody will come along and go, well, I happen to know that's a, you know, a major seventh of this. And, and I go, oh, cool. And then they we work together. But I never really invested a whole lot of my energies in trying to figure out the technical aspect of it. Because I still think and still like to hold on to the belief that it's kind of magic. In yeah, a way. Well, and, and 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 you're absolutely right. I mean, there there there's I, I'm I'm of the opinion that there's room for both, and I've been very technically minded. I, I knew music theory before I could even play any instruments, kind of thing. But wow. I think I think I think there's I think there's room for for both. But but especially I mean, especially if you're collaborating, um, that's that's an excellent approach because you always want to collaborate with someone who has different strengths than you do. Yeah, if you're bringing together lyric and melody, and someone else is bringing together, you know, cool guitar riffs and and chords and 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 the and the bass um, to support that, then you know that, that 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 is that is the magic and that is the chemistry um, that goes together. And and the theory, the theory is so important. It is so important. But for me, like what I bring to the table is that other part. But I need that theory guy. I need the person that goes, you know, if we do this, bring you yeah. go, oh. <laughs> you know, yes. just all of a sudden. So, so for me, I'm still a kid in the candy store, and I've tried, <laughs> I've tried to preserve that. You know, because for me, music has always been like when I say it's magical, I'm not exaggerating. Like I really think it's just amazing. I, I can't. I try to think what what would an alien, you know, coming from another galaxy, come down and they they show up at at some outdoor concert, think is going on here. Mm -hmm. To me, it's it, or like, what is this? You know, you could mathematically work it out and you go, well, maybe this is how it works. Or you could, you know, tonally and hertz and all that stuff work it out. I just don't know what they would make of it. I think because there's all these people jumping around and focused on all these 
four or five people or however many people under lights flashing. Like, what is that? What is that? It's just so nuts. And the way that music makes you feel, mm-hmm. like, you know, sad songs or, or, or bouncy songs or happy songs, just instantly, if you look at a toddler when you play music for them that, that has no idea what the heck is going on, you put it on the radio, you put it on the stereo, whatever you got to do, and they listen to it, and their reaction instinctively yeah. is just amazing. Like, it's so neat. And that's the part that gets me so excited. It's just how it, it, it brings this emotion out and how it can heal. It's, yeah. it's a magical thing. Oh, absolutely it is. But I, I, I still, I do want to get into a bit, a bit of the, the how-to w- w- with you a little bit. Yes, so when, 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 when you, so when you, when you enter a room with this, with this other person that knows all the theory and knows all the guitar licks and stuff like yeah. that, are, are you showing up with uh, already something of a, of a lyric that you've written, some sort of an idea what the song is about, some kind of a melody, or are you going in completely dry and you guys are starting with a with literally a blank page? Or are you waiting? Were you waiting for them to come up with something first? We, well, we come in. I come in. It's a, it's a multitude of different ways. Some people will will have a completed kind of ab, with full production almost. Uh, you know, will come and say, hey, "What do you think of this?" Um, other times, it'll just be a, a little bit of a chord progression, or or you know, definitely like I will say, like, "Look, I sing better in this key," or "I think I sound good," you know, in an open C tuning. Or, or, you know, drop D or whatever it is. And then, you know, they will say, like, well, what are you feeling like today? And I go, I don't know. Do you, do you have something up tempo? Do you have something, you know, that uh, is you know, slower? Just depends. Like, have you got anything that you've been saving and you just haven't been able to finish? You know, it's, it's, it's a lot of combination of ways. And then, to me, and this is how I kind of see songwriting, too, is like, you start sort of with a block. It's like it's like sculpting. Like, so you'll have your you you'll have your standard your standard arrangement. Maybe you'll have your intro uh, into a verse, into a bridge, into a chorus, back into a verse. You know, into the into the bridge, into the chorus, and maybe a C part chorus out. However, you you arrange that. So okay, you've got that, and that's sort of your starting chunk of clay. Now, how can we make this more interesting? And then you start thinking about things and moving things around. And that's what's cool about, for me, that I was so grateful for. And I think some people, you know, with the advent of Pro Tools and, and programming and all that stuff really helps a person like myself because I can visually see, I call them the, the sound waves, the fish. I can see the fish going and I can see the track building and coming back, right? And I look at those things and we start to figure out, you know, structure and dynamics and i base it those all around the key emotion that strikes me when i initially hear the music okay okay so what so what, what about what about lyric development then do you so you you're, you're hearing this this music they're playing back a track or someone's playing the guitar and you and you're vibing yeah. with it and you're feeling something do you how do you approach your lyric writing then do you do you just start blurting out some random nonsense words or do you grab a, a sketchbook of your uh, of writings that you have already? <laughs> or how does that work for you? No, I, I, I never have uh, I've pulled from anything pre-written. It's always on the spot. It usually is like you say, sometimes you're in the, not like on the mic perhaps, but say that they're down on the way and I'll be listening to it and I'll kind of have a melody come and into my mind and the vowels in a way. Um, I'm very like, like I was very influenced early on by say somebody like Bob Dylan, like look at Subterranean Homesick Blues or something like that, where it is a, there's a lot of psychological stuff in it. There's a pattern, you know, like he does that, mm. that kind of, and, and, and the words that you choose and how they bounce over the notes is very important to the message you're trying to get across. Mm-hmm. And in the song you just played, for example, uh, I wrote, wrote that with Ian Alexander Smith, the pitcher and the producer, our last record. He says, "I got. I, we were just about going to um, stop for the day," and he says, "I, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to go, you know, back to go to sleep for a bit. You know, we'll get up tomorrow, start again. But I, I'd, I'd love to have something to work on. Do you have anything else?" He says, "Well, I got this other thing. I don't know. I don't know if you like it. But, you know, like, come on, just show me." So he, it was the beginning. You know that you hear that beginning kind of. Um, 
dissonant chords. Like, ding, 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 yeah. And then it goes, dan, 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 dan. And, and I was like, stop. And he's like, no, I want to play you the rest. I go, no, 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 no. Please stop it. And he's like, why? And I go, because I, I get it already. I feel something here. And I I think I know where I, it could go. And he goes, oh, but wait, there's a caveat. And I'm like, what? This song comes with a caveat? And, like, <laughs> and he goes, I've written four lines to him that I love. And I'm like, wow, okay, what are they? And he's in the and the first four lines, you know, it's it's goddamn boy. You better get a move on. You can't stay here. You can barely get your shoes on. And he goes, and that has to stay it. Hmm. And I'm like, whoa. Like that's a new one for me. I've never had that. Hmm. So I go, okay, so how do you sing it? So he runs it again and he sits, sings it kind of slowly as I do at the beginning of the song. So then I kind of relax my mind, you know, this is is my, my kind of strange song right things and uh i kind of get this image that my character in the song character in the song is being asked you know party's over kid time to get out of here like mm. you know you're going so i can kind of imagine that and i'm sure lots of people out there have probably been in the same situation where like look it's time to get going we're closing it down let's go let's go bars closed lights on let's go right, let's, right, go, let's right. go yeah you notice how the pacing of that picks up. So then I thought, well, then the lyrics must have to pick up and pace because I have to show the urgency of getting out of this place. Mm -hmm. So it quickly goes into the next passage of the lyric. The second half of the verse is kind of double time. And then it gets really quickly near the end. And then all of a sudden when it hits the chorus, it's as, it's as if the door opened to the house into the winter cold. Boom. Mm -hmm. And it goes, ah, ah, I ain't no quitter. Right. And I like that that kind, that style, whatever you want to call that, the, the, that method of getting the song across to the audience. I, I like the method of like, I can visualize it, I can see sort of something playing out, and then I can do sort of what I was saying about the way that Dylan kind of does, or not like I'm as good as Dylan at, at all, but like the way that he just finds syllables and things that will impact that and make it go, you know, create that, urgency and that dynamic and then give you the release at the chorus and let yeah. it out yeah. so that the audience kind of follows you down this path and they go where is this going to go it's getting so tight and then it just opens up yeah yeah i mean it, it, it typically in, in 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 songwriting they say you know verses are tension and then chorus is is release right and and yeah and 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 and, and that's and that's really all it is it's about, it's about setting up contrast right so you said you know you're you're, you're kind of um lots of space at the beginning and then it ramps up and, and the energy kind of gets more intense, more intense. And then, and then the release of the, of the, of, of, of the, of the energy, um, uh, that, that, that falls, um, into the chorus. So the, yeah, yeah. So what, so the, the different thing for you was, was your collaborator saying, I've got these lyrics and they have to, they have to stay here. Yeah. Because you get, then it wasn't a blank slate. Then I couldn't, um, kind of, you know, attempt two or three different melodies. Um, mm -hmm. and the similar thing happened too with, um, with a song that was kind of, um, you know, it was a single on brand new history called, um, make it right. And I, we were working with Bob Rock on that song and I remember I sang it for him and he looked at me and he says, well, I like that first melody. It's nice. But what if you took the lyrics from the first verse and the lyrics from the second verse put them all into the first verse, write me another second verse, and I'm going to go get a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And so, again, there's another test, right? So I had to double time everything, which was really interesting. And so it was almost like he was doing what you were saying, like creating some more tension in the verse. And But I love the fact that in a way, like it was, no, it was, it was not what I had planned to do with this song. And then at the last moment, getting it kind of turned on its head was really interesting. And to have to like quickly figure out a way to find a melody that was double time what the melody was that I had in my head and had practiced forever, you know, it was so like, oh man, <laughs> but it worked out great. And it's a just, so it's a technique that I kind of used since then is like, well, every time that I would write something, I go, this is good, but would it work double time? Would it work half time? You know, try, try those things, like just to create these different ideas. No, oh, yeah, well, that's, that's absolutely a great way to to, to to think about it and, and to look at it. But it's, it's also interesting you say, like, 
you know, you had this, you had this melody in your head already. And especially when you're collaborating with somebody is it, it sometimes it does become uh, a bit of a challenge, you know, to get to, to sweep your ego out of the way and say, yes, I, I have this already, but I'm willing to throw it away and try something a little bit different or try a modification of it, you know, based on based on what's happening in the in the collaboration, just keep it just to keep it rolling and, and to keep it moving. But, you know, and, and, and that that's what we always say is, is the most amazing thing about songwriting. Like you, you, you referred earlier to, uh, you know, a block of marble that you're sculpting. If you're a sculptor and and you and you etch something in, in the stone and then you change your mind, you have to get a whole new you get a whole new uh, slab of marble. Right. You can't. It's going to cost you whatever. Right. With songwriting you can change your mind as many times as you want and try different things. It's not going to cost you a thing, nothing, just time. That's beautiful. And, and the thing is too, I learned early on, like, look, until it's finally pressed in vinyl and it's out there in the world, yeah. nothing. So, yeah. so, you know, there's no sense being precious. You've already got this mm -hmm. one idea. You've got it logged in and you can, you know, whatever. Now let's try more things. And I, the, one of the things in the studio too, um, working on songs is there's nothing's so, there's no there's no wrong i mean i'm sure technically there's some wrong stuff obviously but like any idea as as crazy as it sounds sometimes is worthy at least a little bit of an exp exploration because you just never know what's going to be the thing that's a catalyst to another idea exactly and so you really want to be open that's the biggest thing that i had to learn and here's a great like I have a way that I, I started to do songwriting um, prior to working with Ian Alexander Smith was because of the advent of computer technology. I can go put headphones on, we can loop the chorus, and I can sing just any old melody, different words, different things. Try it, you know, and have, I have a friend, uh, Stefan Segerson down in Los Angeles, who I worked on a couple songs, well, more than a couple songs with over the years. And he would just say, okay, okay, okay. You could be on the talk back, you know, and you go, okay, give me something that's like just, um, I don't know, brighter. And then you just try something. And then he would say, well, now, now give me something that's angry or whatever over that. Or, and just phonetically, you know, saying, well, you know, any words or sounds. Mm -hmm. And I love doing that. I love the loop because then I would kind of find a secret magical part in the mess. And they go, okay, listen to what you're saying here. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't even think about what I'm doing. I would just do it instinctually. And then they would play it back and go, they would kind of highlight the spots that they like and say, hey, see this thing you did it right here? If you could do that triplet and then go into this other thing and back into a whole note or whatever, you, oh, that's money. Yeah. And then, okay, play it for me again, you know? I'd say, play it for me again. And then, with, so I like that. I like that. That, that was a cool thing. Oh, yeah, and Ian's totally. like, yeah, no. What do you mean? Yeah, no. That's the, I had some of my best success that way. Yeah, no. <laughs> so you know, I wanted to push back, but then I remembered, you know, in my head, okay, be open. And like we wrote a song uh, called "Whisper" that is, I would say, is one of the most emotional emotional songs that I've ever written in my career. It's a song about um, when my mother passed away from cancer. Hmm. I I wondered, like, can she? talk to me still can she whisper in my ear even mm -hmm. though i don't know i'm she's there and will i be able to do that for my kids and so i'm writing this song it's just this really really hard felt mm -hmm. thing and ian's got the music on one like the music that we've worked out and now we're doing the melody and lyric on one cell phone mm -hmm. he's got the other cell phone on record so he's playing the music on this cell phone Mm. And he's holding this one, and he's going, okay, sing into this, sing into this. And he's, you know, something like that. And there's people, this is in his kitchen, in his house, and there's four or five other people talking and, and, and interrupting. And, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, what the hell? How am I supposed to work like this? This is insane. But what it forced me to do was really hyper-focus on what I was doing. And it created a very beautiful song that I'm very proud of. And... It's just a different technique. It got me out of my comfort zone, you know? And I think that's important, too. Don't always sit in your comfort zone because then you're going to write the same damn song every time. Like, yeah, true that. David Bowie, I think, said, you know, if, if you're not uncomfortable making a record, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> and uh, I kind of agree. Yeah, you know? absolutely. 
Okay, um, we're going to take a listen uh, to the full, to the full track uh, now. Uh, no quitter, and of course, for our listeners, um, refer to the show post on songtalk.ca. We'll have the lyric sheet up there, so you can follow the bouncing, whatever, follow the bouncing ball, <laughs> and um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it afterwards. Some stuff. Okay, that was No Quitter uh, by Trevor Hurst and Ian Alexander Smith. Yeah, really, really great rocker. I I love the um, I love the simplicity of the chorus because like like you say like you're 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 building up the tension in the verse. There's a lot of words. This and, and and like you're saying, like the sounds of the words are really are really cool. Like in the first verse, the bank, the bills, the rent, the pills, like they're all hard consonants, right? Which yes. makes that which makes that punchiness even punchier, and and the way the the melody works, and then and then the ah, I know quitter, like it's it the ah really is a, is a signpost, right? It's like here's here here's our release. We've dropped into it. Like this this is yeah. it, right? And here's here's where everyone can sing along, um, which which is which is just fantastic and 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 very simple um simple structure there's not really i mean there is a bridge actually life good life just goes that way but again it's very very simple um one line bridge one line chorus you know like it's 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 a tendency i think with with a lot of songwriters myself included to throw a lot of content in there right and you gotta have meaning and you gotta have you know all this stuff but can you can you distill it down to four words that's (laughs) <laughs> that's always that's usually a lot better <laughs> especially for something for something like this that's like it's kind of anthemic right and you want that you want that to really ring out i think so and i think like i've been the same way too where i'm trying to say too much 
or or thinking that my point, you know, if I add a few more words, maybe my point will become more clear. And in fact, sometimes it muddies the waters in a way. And so just having that simple thing, and I love the fact, like how you say the, the Oz, it's, it's a, um, it is a universal signal of chorus or something's coming, you know, it's like, <laughs> it allows, and, and I think it's, it's really kind of, it's important that there are all different styles of songs in on this record as well and i i do like i'm I'm a fan of a rock anthem and i was thinking about what it feels like kind of to be myself and my friends and how it does get overwhelming and it does seem like at times it's too much it's just too much but like you know i just feel like you know don't quit and i'm trying it's almost a, a song kind of encouraging myself like you know you know trevor you're not a quitter you know you you've lost people you've been through a lot but you're not a quitter and to put that into words and be all sentimental about it it's kind of hard but if you just say the fact that like, i'm no quitter that's it really comes across gets the point across effectively <laughs> yeah no it, yeah it's, it's fantastic i mean i mean clearly it, it is it is a self affirmation song right but but the but the great thing about it you know i i ain't that i ain't no quitter like people are going to people are going to read themselves into that too and even even if they are feeling down they'd be like okay how how you know if if, if trevor can do it i can do it too kind of thing right like it, it's it's in it's in it's also empowering in in that sense like okay how, how, how is it that i can like i can not be a quitter today kind of thing right yeah. so it's, it's 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 great and and the anthemic attitude of it it helps like that you you're you're, you're singing it at the top of your lungs it's it's you know it's just fantastic um that way how much so how, how, how many how, how many revisions do you go through the lyric? Like, do you was it, was this was this was this all kind of came out all at once and that was it, or was it was it a few back and forth? I think that the well, the there was uh, the verses were pretty quick, and the chorus, um, the bridge, and then I didn't put all the um, um, exploit expletives. Uh, in the uh, bridge uh, or the C-section or whatever you want to call that. Uh, Ian d did that. And I was like, gosh, man, like, I don't know. Like I've never even barely even said a swear in a song. And now I've got like dozens of the F-bombs right in the middle. Like what's happening to me? <laughs> and he says, but Trevor, like this is the sentiment of this song. Like, this is the thing that you're saying. Like, if you go to the second verse, you know, small town boy never felt good enough. Well, F that noise, you know, it's going to turn around. And even the turnaround line is awkward as heck. And I recognize that. But I kind of wanted to show also that my character is a bit awkward. So it's like awkwardly, but bravely stepping up to the plate to swing the bat, you know, to take that shot. And I've got, since we've been on tour, I've received a number of messages, you know, with social media, you can interact with the fans. And so many people have said, like, what are you doing in my head right now? Like, you know, like, this is what I'm feeling. I can't pay the bills. I'm, I'm overwhelmed with everything. And um, I think that if anything, I hope at least it's a few people get encouraged to just, you know what, <laughs> tomorrow's another day. This two show pass. Let's just get on with it. Yeah. No, yeah, it's it's it, it's a great message, and and it's interesting how you you know you you you've you've identified it's it you know it's going to turn around as a bit of an awkward line, um, because in your first verse you got move on shoes on, um, that kind of day pay, you know you got you got a lot you got you got a lot more structure a lot more a lot more perfect rhymes, and here you got never felt good enough. You know it's going to turn around. It doesn't rhyme at all. It doesn't, it doesn't even come close to rhyme, <laughs> right? So, so it does. It, it so when when that line hits, you do feel a little bit like something's uneasy here. Something's not quite as balanced as it was the first time around, and 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 you feel a little bit of that that, that uneasiness for sure, right? So it's a, so it's a, it's a it's a great it's a it's a great way to to do it, and as well to give that kind of difference to your second verse and go, okay, well the story's evolving here. You know what? What are, what are we? What are we saying? That's a little bit different. And and how can we express that musically? Is is not is is not throwing the perfect rhyme in there. Yeah, I think so. And and it's 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 um, it's also interesting too. Like when you songwrite the way that at least 
at least I find the way when, the way that I do it, sometimes long after the fact, um, you'll realize that your subconscious was kind of taking over the steering of the vehicle for a bit. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you have to catch up sort of to what your subconscious was doing. And I had, I don't know if you remember this, but back in the day, MTV had this MTV unplugged where they oh, would. Yeah. Uh, and so in Vancouver, um, Ray Davies of the Kinks, I went to see that at, at the Vogue and he had his book and he was explaining his songs and singing, you know, all the songs that he does. And he goes, you know, I thought when I wrote some of these, these, you know, songs that have become so popular for the Kinks that I was writing about my asshole brother, but I was really writing about me, mm. he says, you know, and he goes, and that didn't occur to him till after a couple tours. And it's interesting, you know, and then I, I had the privilege of sitting down and, and chatting with him about that after in the after show gathering or whatever. And it was it was really, really something that I, I took with me from that moment on and and just felt like, look, if instinctually you're saying something and you don't quite get it, but you feel it works, go with it because it will make sense eventually to you, you know. Oh, yeah, that, that, that's a really that's a really interesting thing. Yeah, we we actually actually talked that talked talked about that with uh, with a folk artist a couple of weeks ago that she did she did those morning pages things where you just like jot you wake up in the morning you just jot down whatever is on your brain just just rant and rant for five pages, right? And um yeah. and, and 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 it is just kind of spilling out your subconscious thoughts and materializing them somehow, and then you don't know, necessarily know what any of it means, but you know a week later, a couple of weeks later, months later, even you look at that and go. Oh yeah, that was kind of interesting, but it actually lines up with something I did just yesterday. You know, let me see if I can let me see if I can put this together and bring some more meaning to it. And and yeah, you, 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 you know, you never know what what those little nuggets are gonna are gonna hold. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's again like why I think music is magic because like it's just if there's something there that is bigger than us. I really truly believe it. Um, it's just you know. I, when I was working um, at Chinookwapka Dakota Nation, um, I wasn't very familiar with Dakota powwow music or any powwow music for that matter. And they would put on these CDs and, and, and play this music. And I, like every once in a while, there'd be a toddler around or a young baby, and I'd watch them react to the music. And it was so powerful watching them, you know just instantly start to dance or to feel it yeah. and you know this is this is like in the dna it's so beautiful it's yeah something. Oh, absolutely especially that, especially that, that the, you know the, the primal beat the heartbeat of the music you know it's really yes it's, you know it's, it, 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 it's there for for everybody for sure everyone, everyone can appreciate that everyone can, can uh, agree to it Okay, I think um, I think that's about all the time we have um, on uh, on Song Talk Radio. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Trevor Hurst, for for joining us. Um, where can our listeners hear more um, of Econo uh, Line Crush music? It's on all of those, you know, streaming platforms. We're on pretty much every one of those, and Apple and Amazon, and and uh, you can, uh, yeah, just. Just look us up on all those things. The new record will be out in the fall. Uh, second single to follow up to No Quitter should be out in two to three weeks, and uh, it's called Invincible. And we're seems to be a theme there for the first two yeah. singles, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those, those encouragement songs, awesome. Okay, yeah. great. Uh, and uh, we'll we'll link uh, to to your stuff um, from our uh, from our show post on songtalk.ca, of course. Um, and we want to hear from you, our listeners. So please send your comments, Facebook or Instagram, to at songtalkradio, or send us an email, feedback at songtalk.ca. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performance videos and full episodes. And subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on your favorite podcast provider. Uh, you can find links to all the products, books, and web services we mentioned on the show on our resources page on the website. And please join us at our next monthly Song Talk meetup, whether you're in Toronto for our in-person meetups or anywhere in the world for our online meetups. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend the meetup, bring a song and a lyric sheet, and get constructive feedback from other songwriters. Stop by songtalk.ca for the link. Uh, you can follow me at neilmodi.com. And uh, Trevor, what's, what's Econoline Crush's favorite social media platform? Where do you guys go the most? 
I guess it's um, it's it's online course on uh, on Facebook and Instagram is probably our two uh, two two biggest platforms. All right, we'll certainly look you up there. Um, thanks for listening, everybody. Be sure to stop by the website songtalk.ca to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Thanks for tuning in and keep on writing. <laughs>